Daniel owns a business that focuses on establishing clean food and water for remote areas in South America. He travels frequently and has a small army of employees and volunteers. His work not only takes him all over, but he's always in meetings that can take up as much as half of his day. It's a rare phenomenon to have him home, and even rarer still that he gets to spend time with his wife and kids. On the days that he is home, he goes online and monitors his business from afar, defeating the purpose of rest and relaxation. Anna is a freelance writer who works from home. She considers herself moderately successful and earns enough for essentials and luxuries. Like any freelancer, there are days that her workload is relatively light and she spends hours reading blogs and downloading music. On other days, she has so much to do that she hunkers down, brews herself a pot of coffee and pulls all-nighters. As a result, she sometimes turns assignments in late and loses clients. Marie owns a catering and restaurant business that has enjoyed phenomenal success over the past two and a half years. She works 12-hour days and is suffering from heart problems brought on by stress. Marie has always wanted to be successful in this industry and takes steps to ensure that she's always at the top of her game. Despite the success of her restaurant, this business owner insists on doing everything herself despite having more than a dozen full-time employees. The first thing that these three people have in common is that they're entrepreneurs. The second is that they don't know how to manage their time effectively. This skill, which is often touted as something used for big companies or corporate settings, is extremely valuable to the entrepreneur. Whether you are a solo entrepreneur, a work-from-home parent, or own a small business, this video series will teach you how to effectively manage your time, increase productivity, and open up dozens of hours in your day without having to change the rules of physics. Ten years ago, no one would ever have dreamed that this tiny gadget would become a must-have all over the world. When it came out, it was mocked for being user-unfriendly. The scroll wheel feature looked horrible, people said that no one was ever going to spend money on this thing. The inventor of this nifty device was rejected by companies and, desperate, he turned to one of the biggest names in computers to help him out. When it was released in 2001, no one could predict the enormous impact that this invention and the accompanying software would bring. It sparked a revolution, not just in the area of electronics, but around the world. Meet the iPod and the original man behind it, Tony Faddle. Faddle and Apple certainly never dreamed that the iPod would become essential hardware for so many people right around the globe. The entrepreneur in Faddle knew he had a good product, even if he was rejected and laughed at. These are success stories that fuel people's dreams. The one idea that got off the ground and made millions for Tony Faddle is not alone. Do you have a great idea that you've turned into a business? Are you running a business right now that feels more and more like it's eating up days of your life? Are you holding down one or more jobs that simply eat up your day? Do you have a billion responsibilities that just swallow up time? Do you hit the sack every day feeling exhausted, only to get up and do everything again the next day? Think of the guy in the corner of the ancient medieval market peddling horse pads for saddle sore nights. Think of the man hawking the sword sharpener, you know, the easiest way to sharpen that broadsword during jousts and tournaments. There's always that one person who sees a need and looks to fill it, at a profit. The moment that mankind decided that they needed goods and services and developed even the earliest marketplace, the entrepreneur was born. Historical examples of great minds that took great risks include names like the Vanderbilts and the Rockefellers. Walt Disney was an example of a great innovative mind that saw potentials where others did not. Bill Gates is another with Windows opening the world to the personal computer and personalized software. These are household names. Modern examples of those who got rich off a simple idea and built empires from them. Entrepreneurs share one thing. They took risks that came through and reaped millions of dollars from their ideas. Before Oprah came along, no one realized the earning potential that a woman's talk show could have until Oprah revolutionized television. 
These are the big and bold examples. There are dozens of little businesses that thrive on the principle of the entrepreneur. Home-based and small business stories vary. People have successfully created businesses out of hobbies, out of skills they already possess, and needs that they had but could not find fulfilled anywhere else. Julie Clark, for example, built the baby Einstein empire from a simple idea that she had. She wanted to teach her baby about arts. It started with nothing but a couple of home videos and soon grew into a multi-million dollar business. The entrepreneur is different because he or she looks at business from an innovative perspective. The entrepreneur is the kind of person who sees possibility in the smallest or most ludicrous of ventures. People have made money from customized earphones, creating ready-to-download MySpace layouts and other ventures that some may dismiss as tiny. This was because ideas come in many shapes and forms. One never knows what will click, market-wise. If you're one of the few who has it built in to take the risk and create something concrete out of an idea, then you may have the bones of an entrepreneur. It can be an enormous challenge, a risk or a thrill ride. Many ordinary people have created sustainable, profitable careers seemingly out of thin air. The core of entrepreneurship is filling a need that people are previously unaware of. When looking at a business, there are quite a few types or models to follow. Franchising, for example, means taking an already established business model and implementing it in your area. Unlike starting your own business, you may have to deal with the franchisor directly. If you decide to franchise, say, a Starbucks, there are certain standards that you have to adhere to when it comes to hygiene, food and beverage preparation, and employee handling. Common examples of franchising include fast food restaurants and the ever-present 7-Eleven. Some former entrepreneurs sell their ideas by registering them as a trademark and opting for franchise rights later on. Many entrepreneurs, however, prefer to license businesses that sell or promote their own products or services. Technology has made it possible for the savvy business-minded person to do so with minimal capital and maximum returns. Entrepreneurs are as diverse as the ideas they carry and the businesses they create. There are people like you who come from different backgrounds, have different experiences and need to share this with the world. Social entrepreneurs, for example, are entrepreneurs who look for something that will transform current conditions in society. They're motivated to alleviate conditions and to create change at the grassroots level. They look at ways to improve their communities by looking at discrepancies in economic, social or educational conditions. Social entrepreneurs are largely non-profit. Serial entrepreneurs, on the other hand, constantly come up with new ideas and start new businesses based on those ideas. They often sell these ideas to bigger companies and reap the profits or maintain a series of small or medium-sized businesses under one umbrella. The final type of entrepreneur is the lifestyle entrepreneur. These type of entrepreneurs look at how to improve the needs and lifestyle of people around them. Now, it can be something as small as handcrafted clothes or it could be launching a new food product. Great managers and great businessmen and women have some common traits and one of them is the ability to manage time. They know how to make the most of the time and resources given to them. The secret is all in time management and how to use it to create your own time, your own way and your own rules. And we'll start to get down to these practicalities in the next video.